sister Campbell tapped me on the shoulder when we had sat down for uh, right when we were into the offering, and she uh, motioned for me over to him, and then she said, "Can you get Brother John Wall?" Because he was standing two rows in front of me with the offering, and I tapped him uh, on the arm to get him, and then I motioned back and showed him. And I don't remember. I think he went up either to get Brother Joseph or to get some, I think he was going to get Brother Joseph, and he, um, I knelt down, and when I knelt down and looked up at, uh, at the brother, he was Brother James. Brother James, yeah. Brother James, his eyes were open, were open, his eyes were back, but they were just, just set straight ahead, and his mouth was open, his head was down like this, and his, you could just see bubbles and saliva and mucus just coming out. You know, like, and he was just completely still like that. And I just, I put my hand on his shoulder and started praying. And then I could feel other brothers coming up also and started praying. I could hear Brother Joseph praying. And then um, as he was praying, he, could, he said he could feel his heartbeat coming back. And then we picked him up and brought him outside. And by the time we got him outside, he was still... His eyes were, he was moving them at that point, and he was, and another brother had his head lifted up, Brother Matt, who said, I mean, he checked for a pulse, Brother Adam checked for a pulse, um, and they couldn't find anything. And then uh, Brother Joseph said when he first put his hand on him, he said he, and then when he started praying, he could feel that pulse starting to come back. And then uh, we carried him out, and by the time we got him outside, he was, he was already doing better. He was starting to close his eyes, open his eyes. He still wasn't really coherent, but then he started. Brother Adam asked him how old he was. And instead of answering, he just <laughs> raised up his hand. <laughs> so we knew we knew he was still doing good. When, when, you, doing good. when you first noticed him, how long do you think he had been like that? When we sat down, when we sat down for uh, just in the pre-service, I thought he had fallen asleep because I could hear twice I heard him make a sound almost like I don't know if he was snoring but I could hear just almost like a snoring sound it sounded like a snore but it just happened two times just kind of a kind of a drawn out kind of not drawn out but just kind of a snore sound and I had thought he had fallen asleep but um, my mom said she noticed when we were standing up singing that he was um, slouched over and that he wasn't standing up with us so we sang for at least what five or ten minutes had to have been and he was sitting down he never stood up which sure. means he had to have been at least out while we were up singing before we stood up so when he was when we stood up he never even stood up so he was he could have gotten been gone then so it wasn't a matter of seconds it was a matter of no, minutes it was a matter that he was of minutes it was a matter maybe of minutes. five minutes ten minutes I mean we sang for we sang for a long time so, and it was, I mean, we sang, he prayed, did the prayer request and all that, and then we sat down, so it was, it was a long time. I'm Brother Matthew Golden from Owensboro, Kentucky. I'm a practicing general surgeon uh, at the hospital there. I was actually sitting in the row in front of Brother James this morning. Uh, Brother Isaac Toy's wa wife came and got me uh, shortly after that we realized that he wasn't breathing. I turned around, got directly out of my seat, went to him. Uh, he was slumped over in his chair. I checked his pulse, checked his respirations. He had no carotid pulse on his neck, had no respirations at all, uh, wasn't protecting his airway at all. I immediately went to the front of the congregation and waved to the platform to get some help, uh, and then went back to assist Brother James. Um, I actually had my hands on his carotid pulse, and I lifted up his airway, trying to open his airway. He had no gag reflex or anything uh, when I squeezed his neck. Um, no signs of life at all. He was cold and pale. We immediately went into prayer. Um, Brother Adam came shortly after that uh, and got down in front and checked a carotid or a radial pulse. Um, this is Brother Adam. Uh, I'm Brother Adam Evans, and I work for Voice of God. I uh, worked there for about eight years, but before that I was in the fire service and I was a paramedic for 10 years out of about 13 years in the fire service. And one of the deacons had got my attention and said they need some help over here. And when I got to Brother James, uh, Brother Matt was behind him holding his head up with his hand 
on his neck, uh, checking a pulse. And so I did the same thing on the other side of his neck, checked a pulse on that side. I didn't find anything. Checked a radial pulse and didn't find anything. It was, it was clear that this had no signs of life. He was very cool, sweaty, um, just had some mucus coming out of his mouth, and very clear that he had, had passed at that point. So we just continue to pray. Um, I don't know how long it was. You know, in your in your thinking as a human, you think, well, you need to start CPR, and something told me just to pray. And at that time, uh, some of the other brothers came, and Brother Joseph came, and he came down in front of uh, Brother James, and I, I was I was praying, and and we don't know I don't know the time frame of how it happened, how long it took, or what happened. Um, but as we were praying, I, I felt him kind of gag and, and kind of take in a deep breath. And you felt the breath kind of come back in him. I didn't feel a pulse of that second. I felt the breath first. Um, Brother Adam felt it at the same time, looked up at me and said, he's breathing, kind of asking me, you know, is he breathing? And, and I said, yeah, he's breathing. And, and we felt it at the same time. I kept my hands on his pulse and I felt the pulse slowly actually come back at that point. Um, it, you could kind of, could kind of feel him kind of trying to catch his head, trying to get strength back to him. And at that time, we took him out of the service, um, carried him around. By the time we got him outside, he kind of had a little bit more signs of life to him. By the time we got around the front of the building, he was he was nodding, slowly kind of incoherently speaking to us. And then he started speaking to us and slowly woke up from there, got stronger and stronger, uh, started praising the Lord. Every time we'd ask him his age, he'd, he'd praise the Lord. Um, and then when the ambulance got there, um, I told them what had happened, and I actually rode in the ambulance with him to the hospital. Uh, when I got in the ambulance, I kind of explained to him the situation, and I told him, I said, God just raised this man from the dead. And they put on an EKG leads and ran a 12-lead EKG, and, and I actually myself got to look at it. It was completely normal uh, for his age. There was no major heart attack or changes on the on the EKG, no funny heart rhythms or anything. Um, his oxygen level was 100%. They had trouble checking it because he kept wanting to praise the Lord the whole time there. Um, the last thing he remembered was Brother Joseph coming out and telling him, we prayed for you, brother, you're going to be all right. And we rode in the, in the ambulance, and he just was praising the Lord the whole way there. Uh, we got to the, to the emergency room, and by then he was kind of already laughing and already praising the Lord and happy. Um, the only thing in the emergency room that we found, I was there through the whole thing. They let me come back with him to the CT scanner, and uh, I saw his EKG there in the emergency room. His, his labs were normal. His heart enzymes were normal. He didn't have a major heart attack. His head CT was normal, so he didn't have a major stroke or anything to explain it. Everything was normal except for his temperature. His body temperature was about 94 degrees. We didn't believe it at first because he was awake talking to us so much, and he looked so well. Um, but after checking it again, it was about 94. I don't know what that means. Uh, all I can say that it means is he must have been dead for a while to actually get a body temperature that low. Um, and after we got to the emergency room, he warmed up and came up to normal before I left. From, from my perspective, when I, uh, after me and Matt had kind of first touched base and realized that he didn't have a pulse, I started unbuttoning the brother's shirt. And I had it in my mind that this person had passed on, but I just kind of knew that the Lord was going to do something. And I wanted to make sure that I could say positively that he had passed away at that point. I unbuttoned his shirt. Um, I put my hand on his chest just to make sure I couldn't feel anything, any respirations or any heartbeat or anything. And as I was doing that, I may have been there for, I don't know, felt like a, a while, but it was probably 30 seconds to a minute, where the Joseph had come up. And Brother Joseph's hand, I felt it underneath my hand. And shortly thereafter, I felt the brother's chest just rise a little bit. And that's, I was pretty sure I felt him breathe. That's when I stood up and got in first in the brother's face. And I was feeling by his cheek to see if he was breathing at all. And I felt a little something. And that's when I looked at Matt and I said, he's breathing. And Matt says, I know. And uh, I kind of squatted back down. I looked at Brother Joseph and said, he's breathing. And Brother Joseph just stared at me for a second and um, looked very intent. And he said, do you want us to get him out of here and get him going? And he said, yeah. And so we put him in his chair and we got him out and we heard the rest of the story from Matt. Uh, both you brothers, uh, Brother Adam, you first. In your expert opinion and all of your experience, what do you think happened to this brother as far as physically while in service? 
Um, some of the people around him were saying that um, before anybody was really alarmed, uh, that he was just sitting there with his head down, and he made a couple um, snoring type sounds, and they weren't sure if he was asleep or what, but the, um, there is a like a snoring respiration for a dying person that's um, pretty common when somebody's dying. Could have very well been the case, and I think he may have been deceased for quite a while, uh, a number of minutes before somebody actually noticed. Uh, when they noticed, by the time we all got there, I mean, it was just clear. He was uh, pale, white, he was sweaty, very cool, no signs of life at all. His eyes were fixed, not responding to anything. Um, obviously, no respirations, absolutely no pulse. I checked every way I knew how to check to, uh, to see if he had a pulse, uh, just because I, I felt that the Lord was going to do something, and I wanted to be sure that I knew that he wasn't just passed out or fainted. Uh, he was he was definitely deceased. I've seen a lot of people who are have been dying, and, and people who are deceased in my previous career, and I mean it was clear he, he was he was not a, not living at that point. Well, Matthew, how about your, your friend? I feel the same way. I, I can't explain what happened. Um, to me, you know, as, as much as you, you see in the medical field, and I see it you know, at least every month or so, you, you're, you're there when somebody passes or you have a wreck come in and somebody passes and your hand's on their pulse when they pass. Um, he was cold. Uh, like we said, he was obviously had no signs of, of life that I could tell. Um, the only thing in, in my mind that can explain it is his heart must have went into a funny rhythm or something during the service, and, and he died uh, for a number of minutes. Uh, usually when you don't perfuse for a few minutes, uh, you can tell when you come up to a patient. Uh, and it, it definitely looked to me the best that I can say that he had been gone for a few minutes. Brother Matthew, are you the one, um, when someone comes in and they're deceased, are you the one that would give them a death certificate or would, yeah, would say that? I would. I would, so I you... would have to. Um, and that's it's it's up to the doctor that's there. And I've, I'm um, certified to run codes in the hospital when somebody passes in the hospital to try and bring them back in CPR and advanced trauma life support, too. Um, so I would be the one that would declare somebody dead on a death certificate. Uh, that would be something I'd have to fill out. So you're pretty sure he was dead? Huh? That's uh, If he was in the hospital, we would have already called him more. Yeah, so. How about you, Adam? Um, a typical scenario would be that uh, us as paramedics would be working on the patient, uh, doing the you know advanced cardiac life support, and actually doing the, the work while a physician like Matt would be more or less calling out the orders, calling out the drug dosages, and the one making the decisions on when to say this person has passed, when to keep trying, when to try to defibrillate, when to when to do that. And we're kind of the, the hands for the doctors who are usually doing that. And that's a typical scenario once in the hospital. In the field, um, you know, obviously we don't have a doctor there. And so we do, we have, you know, standing orders that we work under a physician's license. And uh, then we usually call up the hospital, talk to a doctor like that, and get uh, advice on whether to pronounce the person dead on the scene or to take them into the hospital. Situation like this, uh, we would have, you know, done CPR on the patient, put them on an EKG. If it merited it, we would have tried to defibrillate, try to bring it back with, with medicine, which a lot of times some drugs will get a, a heartbeat back, but it's just caused by the medicine. Um, this, in this scenario, we didn't do anything except for pray. Um, we didn't do CPR. We didn't try to give any sort of respirations. We just laid our hands on them. Um, I was you know, very busy trying to find a pulse, trying to find some sort of sign of life with the brother, and it just wasn't there. Uh, but then when we we both felt that respiration at the same time, I think we, uh, neither one of us was really surprised. I think I would have been surprised if if we didn't feel it at that point. It's, I don't think the Lord would have allowed that in this church. So, Adam, you were, you're were you sure he was gone? I'm positive. Well, Matthew, you're sure he was gone? I'm positive. See, my name is uh, Brother James E. Jackson from Jeffersonville, Indiana. And I went to church Sunday morning, and about, like I always do, about the same time, early, get up there and get find me a seat and sit there and listen to the gospel singing of, uh, of Brother Branham and everything. And 
Then I sat down and listened more singing and everything. And as I sat there and got time for the meeting to start and everything, then I remember kind of sat down with my head bowed down and stuff. And, and uh, I don't know what I was doing on that. <laughs> and I was just, next thing I know when I woke up, I was on the way in the ambulance to go to, to the hospital and everything. Brother Joseph had prayed for me and everything. And the Lord has healed, healed me and everything, brought me back to life. So we got to give the Lord credit for that. But you can't say too much thanking the Lord. I learned that a long time ago. Mighty good. Thank the Lord to put me into this wonderful message, the only message that it ever was. Thank you, Lord. Amen.